Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Harmony. 
Thank it's you, God. Yes. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You see, we can do nothing on our own without, without Jesus. But if you're a child of God, you can do all things because He strengthens you. It's not your strength. The Apostle Paul says, it's not my might or by my power. It's by the Spirit of God. Not by, and we sing a song about that. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. Yes. Right? It's by His power. It's by His might. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Glory Lord. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, we are in the last days. Yes, we, we are. We really are. Amen. We're in the last days. And the Lord's really laid this on my heart. And a lot of people, I mean, have the, the Lord's told them to tip, warn people. We are in the last days. Amen. And when you look at the world, you will realize we really, really, really are. I mean, we, it is getting bad out there. It doesn't, you know, a lot of people in the church think we're going to, it's going to, things are just going to get so much better. Things are not going to get so much better, folks. The Bible declared, Jesus himself declared that in the last days, because sin shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. In other words, even people who are living for God, they're becoming cold because they're getting caught up in this worldly sin, these worldly things. We need to stay away from the world. Yes. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. That's Jesus right. prayed for his disciples. He said, Father, he said, I know they're here in the world, but help them protect them from the evil. Yes, amen. Keep them from the evil. We're in the world, but we're not to be yes. of the world. We don't win the world by trying to become the world. We win the world by letting the light of Jesus Christ shine in our lives. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Yes. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And so I don't see the world getting better and better and better. No. I don't see that. A lot of people think we're going to have this giant revival in the last days. But you know, Jesus said it's kind of like the, the Noah's Ark, the flood. Yeah. As in the days of Noah, so shall also the yeah. coming of the Son of Man be. Yeah. The days of Noah, yes. God looked at men's hearts and they were only evil continuing yes. before he brought his judgment. Yeah. We're, we're not, things are not going to get better and better. Things are becoming worse, and they are becoming worse and worse. Yes. Even in the political yes. scene, folks. Yes. Thank the last you. time people voted yes. for morals was the second time President Bush ran for president. People came out in landslide proportions and voted for morals. Since then, people have just been going down, 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 down. Back when I was in Bible college, the average divorce rate, people were getting divorced by about 40%, both outside the church and in the church. That's right. Now... Hardly anybody's married. Less than 50% of people get married now. It's wild. That's right. It's wild. All kinds of people. Younger and older. Amen. Things are getting evil. Yes. Yes. We're, when the political things, they vote for evil people. Don't vote for evil people. That's what God told me. Hallelujah. He said, don't vote for the least of two evils. If somebody's evil, don't vote for them. <laughs> so, and see, I, if I obey God, if I obey God, then I'm going to do okay. And I'm only responsible for me. I'm going to be okay with God as long as I'm obeying God. Yes. If I'm not obeying God, then I'm in trouble. Okay? I'm in trouble. Me too. Because then God's not got my back. But if I'm obeying God, then I'm doing okay. Yes. Hallelujah. I bet people uh, get after me for certain things, but I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just going to do what God tells me to do. Hallelujah. So when I woke up this morning, the Lord told me to preach on the end times. Jesus is coming soon. Yes, he is. Jesus, we need to be ready yes. all the time. Jesus said, the wicked, deceitful servant said in heart, his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. So he went about doing evil things. You see, if you believe that Jesus can't come back right now, you may not live for God. But if you know that he can come back any moment, That's right. then you'll make sure you're ready. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Five, the five virgins, ten virgins, five of them were ready and five of them weren't. Five of them had oil in their lamps and five didn't. Oil, the lamps ahead. It represented light. So five were walking in light and five were not. And so the ones that were ready, they, when the trumpet sounded, they were ready. Five of them were not ready. And then the door was shut. You know Noah, 
No, the Bible calls Noah a preacher of righteousness. The Bible says Noah was righteous in all his generations. He was a holy, righteous man. Noah was. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And him and his what, three sons and their wives, mm -hmm. his wife, they all were spared from the wrath to come. Amen. We need to be spared from the wrath to come because Jesus is coming back soon. We need to live right for God. We need to walk with God all the time we can. Amen. The Bible says only two people in the Bible talks about walk with God. was Enoch and Noah. It says that they walked with God. Those two people are only people mentioned in the Bible that says and they walked with God. We need to walk with God. We, we, we are greater. Jesus said those that are least in the kingdom of God, he's talking about Christians, are greater than John the Baptist. He said John the Baptist was the greatest prophet that ever lived. He said yet the, those that are least in the kingdom of God are greater than John the Baptist. Why? Because now we have the actual spirit of Jesus Christ. Yes, in us. amen. We have the spirit of Jesus Christ in us to help us to live like we should live. Amen. Paul said in Romans chapter 7, he's talking about a man trying to live for God under the law. He said, the things I didn't want to do, I kept finding myself doing. And those things I really wanted to do, I just couldn't seem to do. <laughs> At the end of the chapter, he said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, only through Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. We need to be ready, folks. We need to warn the world. That they need to turn away from their right. sins Amen. and turn to God. Amen. Yes. Because without Jesus, they're going straight to hell. I picked up a drunk man here about a week and a half ago. And he said, well, my pastor tells me that I can be doing this and I'm still okay with God. He said, but I feel like inside I'm going straight to hell. That's what he told me. Holy Spirit gets me. You know, the Holy Ghost was working on him. Amen. The devil's not going to tell you you're going straight to hell. The <laughs> devil wants to pull you straight to hell. Amen. The devil's going to try to make you feel good in your sin. God's trying to deliver you from your sin. God's, Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That's right. The Holy Spirit is dealing with every single person in the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, he's trying to make you feel guilty if you're in sin. That's judgment. God is. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, it says when you choose with knowledge, you, once you've been redeemed, if you choose with knowledge Thank you, to go into sin with knowledge, he says there remaineth therefore no more, therefore no more sacrifice for sin. That means the sacrifice Christ provided yes. for you no longer remains on your life. Thank That's what you, it means. Lord. The next verse says, for there's a certain fearful looking for as of judgment against the adversary. You see, we become God's adversary when we choose to go back into sin. Once we've been redeemed, once we've been washed, once we've been set free, we choose to go back into those old ways. Amen. Then there's a certain fearful looking for as of judgment. That's why he felt like he's going straight to hell, because he was on the path to hell. I told him, though, Jesus came to deliver you from that. He can set you free from that. He can break the power of that in your life if you truly want to be set free. You have to truly from your heart, and God knows our hearts, you have to truly from your heart turn away from that sin and turn to God. Amen. And call out to him. He will break the power of that alcohol in your life. And before, before I left him, he said, will you please keep praying for me? We need to keep praying for him. Yes. Amen. Because, I mean, I believe God sent me to, to him that day Amen. to help him. Yes. Amen. I Thank mean, you. I normally don't take runs over 15 minutes away, but I felt my spirit. This was 25 minutes away. I felt my spirit that I needed to go to that run. Yes. So I took that run, and I got there, and I couldn't find the guy, and I called him. I said, where are you? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> he was too drunk to know where he was. That's right. but, but I happened to be sitting right in front of a bar, and there he was. <laughs> <laughs> But we, there's a lost and dying world. Jesus said, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Hallelujah. Amen. Those Amen. that are hungry for God, they need God. They need Jesus. Amen. 
Praise your Father. Yes. We need to be led by the Spirit of God in everything yes, we, we do. do. Yes, we do. It's a real key Amen. to our walk with God. It's being led by the Holy Ghost. We need to live and we need to be led by the Spirit of God. He will give us the words we need to say to people. He'll give you the direction to go. I mean, some guy, guy just kind of feeling your spirit, perceiving your spirit. I need to go do that. You need to do it. As long as it lines up with the Lord. You need to do it. I just learned to just do everything the Lord directs me to do. James says, if we set plans too rigid, say, I'm going to do this next year and this other thing next year, then we we're, we're set to do that. If we set our hearts to do things without knowing, not without sure it's God's will, then we need to be careful because, because then we may miss God. That's right. Be flexible enough to where you're willing to do whatever God has you to do. Absolutely. Amen. I, I, I had you. set a plan uh, one day. It was, a, I believe, the Friday before last. Because we go on a Bible study on Friday nights. And I'd set a plan that day on that Friday to, to work the, this Uber because I work, I make money for the church is what I do. I give 100% of my money to the church for my Uber money. And so uh, I had this plan to work Uber uh, that day till like 5 o'clock and then go back for Bible study. But by 4 o'clock, I was only up to like 35 bucks. I hadn't even covered my gas. <laughs> so anyhow, I, I felt like I should call Kathy and tell her I'm not going to be able to make the Bible study. I said, but pray for me. And so that night was a night that that woman, that drunk woman, told me, how could you do, how could you do this? And she said, she said she won my card, so I gave her my card. She was going to call me, and I'm going to explain to her. She said, will you please, if I call you, will you please explain to me how that Jesus helps you not to drink? Amen. So I'm believing she's going to call me. Yes, Hallelujah. God is good. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But, but, but they prayed for me. Now, before that, I hadn't talked to anybody else that day. I believe it wasn't just for the money, but I believe it was for that woman. That's right. So I just love doing this Uber because I get to I get to let the Lord lead me, you know, into reaching people, helping Amen. people. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord. And he leads me in all kinds of people. I picked up one guy one night. I'm kind of getting off a little bit, but not really. I picked up one guy one night and he had a guitar. And he was drunk as a skunk. <laughs> he was just holding a beer and he said, Can I drink a beer in the car? I said, No, you're gonna to have to stand out there and drink a beer. <laughs> So, so he finished his beer and he got in. And I said, oh, I've got guitars. He said, you do? And he, he said, how come? I said, because I'm a pastor. I said, I'm a preacher. And so we, the whole, it was a half hour ride. The whole ride, we were talking about the things of God. By the time we got done with the ride, he was ready to give his life back to God. Amen. And he asked Amen. me to pray for him. We got outside the, the car and prayed for him. And then he said, can I pray for you too? And he said, Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, We need to be sensitive to God, to his direction. The thing is, if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have followed God, I would have missed that run. Yes, right. Hallelujah. So we need, we need to follow God in everything we do. Praise your Father. Yes. One time, this podium right here, and I've told this story a lot of times, so a lot of you probably heard it. But a long time ago, when we first started the church, I ordered this podium. That's right. And the thing was, I went, I ordered this podium from a local place called Fantastic Plastics here in Kansas City. And, and they told me it'd be two weeks before I could pick it up. And so two weeks came, and I called them up. I said, is the podium done? They said, no. And so then another week came, and I said, the podium. I, and finally, I started calling me every other day or something. Find out if the podium was done. Because, I mean, this has gone on for weeks and weeks. Finally, they called me up on a Thursday. They said, the podium is done. They was kind of upset. They said, the podium is done. You have to pick it up tomorrow. That's what they told me. <laughs> So I asked, we were, it was $500, so I asked Kathy, I said, I said, Kathy, how much do we have in the church account? She said, we have $200 in the church account. And I had more in my personal account, so I thought, well, I can just pay for it out of my personal account. And so that day I was driving, <coughs> and the Lord impressed me to drive to Galen Williams' house over in Shawnee, Kansas. And so I just started heading to, get to Galen Williams' house in Shawnee, Kansas. I got about halfway there, and the Lord spoke to me real clear. He said, I want you to give, when you get there, I want you to write them a check for $100. And immediately I thought, well, I need to write that in my personal account. Because I only have $200 in my church account. And so the Lord said, no, write it out of the church account. I said, okay, Lord, I have half the money in my church account, I'm going to write it. <laughs> so I got there, and, and I found out, then he started telling me how they were having financial trouble. And so I thought, well, you know. And so I told him. 
I said, I'm going to write you a check for $100. And he said, no, no, no. You see, he thought he was manipulating me. No, I said, no, no, no. I said, on my way over here, the Lord told me to write you a check for $100. So I'm going to write you. He told me to write it out of the church account and not for my personal account. I told him that. And so anyhow, then I get back home. I got home and it was, would you with me? Yeah, a whole thing. Okay, so she was with me. So, so she confirms this whole thing. So anyhow, my wife's with me. So we get home and we go to the church. Yes. And somebody had slid a check under the church door for $500. That's right. And nobody knew about that. Nobody, nobody knew, knew ahead nobody that, knew that we needed, needed that, that money. money or anything. No. I mean, that was just God. <laughs> we had years ago, when we first were starting in ministry, we, 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 were, we got to the place. I mean, we were faith people. Even when we started in ministry, we were faith people. And we got to the place where, where we were almost out of food. We, we were living here in Excelsior, in an apartment above my grandparents' house. And uh, we finally, we ate our last food we had in the house. Our last food. For our last, and we didn't tell anybody at all. Nobody knew that we were out of food. And so I told Kathy, I said, well, God supplies all of our needs according to his riches yes, and glory by Christ Jesus. And so I said, well, God will provide the food. And we were doing ministry full time. And so I said, well, God will provide the food. Amen. And before the next meal, we opened the door to our apartment. And there were sacks and sacks of food sitting outside There's our door. Five of them. I mean, five yes. sacks of food sitting outside wow. our door. Isn't that something? He was. Yes. Nobody knew we were out of food. Wow. Nobody. We didn't. It's not like we spread it around everywhere. We we're running low on food. We didn't do that. <laughs> Five sacks. And then that night, we went to a revival at a church, and uh, Assembly of God Church, and they had an older guy there. And uh, we were praying for people at the altars. They were, after, after service, there were people at the altars praying. The, the, the old I mean, he probably is about my age now. <laughs> the old guy. Huh? I'm an old guy now. The old guy. But this older guy, he goes, uh, he said, are you guys ministers? I said, yeah, we are. He said, I thought so. He said, can you guys use some food? I said, well, we could, yeah. He said, well, they gave me so much stuff I can't even eat it all. Yeah. So, so he said, well, you come, you come to my trailer outside after service. And so we went out there and... He, he gave us several sacks of groceries. And the thing about it is the sacks of groceries he gave us complimented the sacks we got earlier. Yes. In other words, one of them had the pancakes. That had the syrup. One had the eggs. That had the bacon. I mean, everything was complimented. It was just God saying, look what I've done. That's right. That's right. One had the cereal. The other had the milk. Just everything. I mean, God. Just believe God, follow God, trust in God. Yes, amen. If you do that, God will show up. Absolutely, you, absolutely. Hallelujah. God is great. Well, glory. He is mighty. I guess I'll get to the word Nothing's here. too hard Thank for you. Him. Amen. Throw me to Luke chapter Thank 21, verses 28 through 33. What chapter? Luke chapter 21, verses 28 through 33. Okay. Praise you, Father. Luke chapter 21, verse 28. And he's talking about end time stuff. And this is Jesus talking because it's in red letters in my Bible. And when these things, talking about end time stuff, when these things begin to come to pass, when these things, now he goes on into stuff that's going to happen in the tribulation too. But he says, when these things begin to come to pass, talked about even before the tribulation stuff. He said, when these things begin to come to pass. That's right. Begin to come to pass. Then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So we should be watching yes. and waiting. Because Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Thank you. All the things are happening that, G that the Bible talks about will be happening in the last days. The Bible says, because sin shall abound, the love of many shall wax called Jesus said that. Another place says, another place says, people will run to teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. That's a big formula for building mega churches. 
you know there's a formula for building mega churches? There is. Don't offend people. Tell them what they want to hear. Don't mention hell. <laughs> Don't even talk about that. Jesus talked about hell more than he did heaven. That's right. Why? Because we should be warned if we're, if we're going to hell, we need to be warned about it. Because, because who wants to live forever and ever and ever in a place of torment? Never. You know what I'm saying? If someone's going to drown, you want to warn them that Absolutely. the water's deep. Yeah. If you know they can't swim, and they're about to jump out of a boat, and the water's real, real deep, oh, I don't want to offend them. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to offend them. They may get upset with me. Yeah. You better warn a person. Why? Because, because God tells us to. Right. We are watchmen on the wall. Yes. In Ezekiel, it tells us yes. that if a righteous person Amen. turns away from their righteousness and, and turns to sin, he said, you warn them Amen. that if they do that, that I will, and if they die in their sin, I won't ever remember they ever were righteous. Amen. That's what he told them. He said, warn the, the sinners that if they continue in sin, they'll die and go to hell. He said, warn them all. Amen. We are supposed to warn people. But the Bible says a lot of, a lot of pastors won't do that because they're, they're like dogs without, without barking. They will not warn. Why? Because of because of gain. Because of inappropriate gain. Yes. I mean, I don't want people to go to hell just so I can get some money. That's right. I mean, I'm telling you. Life is more than money. Amen. What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? That's right. I mean, it all, all matters is what we build up in eternity. Yes. You know, I found, I found out a truth. One day, we will all die. <laughs> when, when you said that about you're going to die, immediately what I thought is we're all going to die. Okay. Yes. yes. We're all going to die. It's a point once of the man to die. Right. And then the judgment. Yes. The only thing that really matters for eternity is what we build up in heaven. Amen. Amen. That's all. Only thing that counts is going to count is what you built up in heaven. Yes. Yeah. What we do here in the earth, it's all temporal. That's right. It's all temporary. That means temporary. While we look not at things which are seen, but things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So That's we right. should keep our eyes fixed on things above. Yes. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and, and his, his righteousness, righteousness, and then yes, all Lord. these yes, other Lord. things shall be added unto you. Right. We need to walk like Jesus is coming back any moment. Yes. Yes. We need to talk to people like Jesus is coming back any moment. Their time is short just like ours is. Yeah. Yeah. But if they're not ready, they're, they're headed for, for a devil's hell. And it's, it's not our hell. It was never created for man. It was created for the devil and his angels. But if we choose to follow him, then we're going where he's going. We, 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 whoever we yield our members to obey, that's who servants we are. That's who slaves we are. Whether of sin unto death, but of, of obedience unto righteousness. So we need to obey God. We need to forsake all evil, all appearance of evil. If something appears to be evil, we need to get away from it. That's right. A lot of times we think, well, let's say this first row of chairs is a cliff edge. And I know that I won't die as long as I don't fall off that cliff. But I'll see how close I can get to that cliff. Yeah. Yeah. And we see how close we can get to sin. Yeah. Well, I haven't sinned yet. But how close am I? Uh, I'm getting pretty close. <laughs> but I may accidentally slip, right? Yeah. Don't get so close. The Bible says flee all those things. That's right. The word says flee fornication. Don't see how close you can get to it without committing it. Run away, Run away from it. That's right. Run as though in terror. Come on, brother. I mean, if a shark was coming at you, would you see how close you could get to it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, we're talking eternity here, folks. We're talking about something that will, can send you to eternal hell. We need to run away from all kinds of things, evil things. Yes. Just for sake. If, 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 even, if, even if something looks kind of right. sinful, we need to stay away from it. Right. Even if and there could be the perception of wrong, yes. we need to stay away from it. Yes. Amen. Even if it's something... It may, not, it may be okay for me to do that, but it may send somebody else to hell. That's I'm right. going to stay away from it. If I'm around people that I know it might offend them, it might hurt them, it might entice them to sin. That's right. Stay away. Then I'm staying Absolutely. away from it. Yes. 
The Apostle Paul said, if, if my eating meat causes someone else, if my liberty of eating meat causes someone else not to, you know, to get into sin, he said, I'll not eat meat. That's, he said, I'll not eat meat as long as the, the earth's alive, around. Mm -hmm. The earth's around for a while. <laughs> so what we need to have that kind of attitude, I'll not do anything that's going to cause someone else to stumble. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'll, I'll just not do that. Even, though, even if it's lawful for you to do don't do it, especially if you've had problems in those kind of areas. Stay away from it. That's right. Hallelujah. Well, glory. That's right. Amen. Good word. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Verse 31, so likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh or near at hand. Verse 32, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That's right. Thank you. Jesus is coming soon. We, we see these things coming to pass. Sure but thanks to Jesus. It talks about earthquakes in divers places. That means all different kinds of places. That's right. Wars and rumors of wars. We see all these things, folks. We are living in the last days. People are running. Until we, until we had... Like, I think one of the first mega churches was in England or something and in, in, in modern time. And what they found out, if they told people that they could live like they want to live, that they were okay with God, if they told people that they could build a big church, listen, the Holy Spirit deals with everybody. Yeah. I, I had a homosexual guy tell me that I talked to. When, matter of fact, when he came forward in a meeting that I was in, when he came forward... By the Spirit, the Lord spoke to me and said, he's a homosexual. And they were praying. They had the kids up there praying for people. He said, he's, he's getting sexually excited by having those kids lay their hands on him. That's why he's going forward. And so they, the pastor's wife, his pastor's wife, I think, came over to me and asked me to go up and pray with him. And so I went up <coughs> to pray with him. And, and I told him, I said, you're a homosexual, right? He looked at me kind of shocked. He said, yes, I am. The lady who brought him to church didn't have any idea he was a homosexual. And so, so, and I, I said, well, I said, the Lord told me that you came up here because you would get excited by these little kids laying their hands on you. I said, is that right? He said, that's exactly right. He admitted it. But see, that's you know, God can like use you like that. Yes. God, but you better make sure it's God. Absolutely. <laughs> but I was sure it was God, you know. And so he wanted to get his ticket to heaven. He wanted to get saved without changing his life. You know, without repentance, there is no forgiveness of sin. That's right. You have to truly from your heart, and God knows our hearts. You have to truly from your heart turn away from your sin and turn to God. Amen. I told him, I said, what you're going to have to do, I said, you're going to have to forsake this lifestyle. You're going to, from your heart, you have to turn away from that. And he lived in San Francisco with a, with a man that he was with. And he said, the preachers out there in San Francisco, they tell us we can live like that and that that's okay with God. I pointed at his chest. Stand up, Tom. <laughs> I pointed at his chest just like this. I said, stand sideways. He said, I said, sir... I said, you know that's not right. You know in your heart that's not right, don't you? And so tears started coming down his eyes. Even though the preachers had told him he could live like that and it was okay with God, even though the preachers had told him that, he knew in his heart yes. that that was not right. So he started crying. He said, I know that's not right. You see, Amen. God's dealing with everybody. Everybody. The Amen. sinner. Thank Just you. like that drunk man I was talking to. He said, I feel like I'm going straight to hell in my heart. He said that. He told me over and over, I just feel like I'm going straight to hell. He was going straight to hell. The Bible says no drunkard shall enter the kingdom of God. Either the word's true or it's not, folks. The word is true. Yes. We need to warn people. We need to know, let them know that there is hope. His name is Jesus yes. Christ. Hallelujah. He came to break the power of all kinds of Thank addictions. You, and 
people's yeah. lives to set them free Amen. and make them whole. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. What the law could not do and that was weak through the flesh by God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned or put to death the power of sin in the flesh. Now Amen. we can walk after the spirit yes. and not after the flesh. Thank now we can do we walk in the light and not darkness. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now we can do what God commands us to that's do. Right. By his power, by his might. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. We need to really Thank you, we Lord. need to open our eyes. We need to help the ones around us. Let God use us. Yes. To help the ones around us. Don't be afraid to offend somebody. Hallelujah. Be concerned enough about them to let them know that they are on a path to hell. I had a lady come to my church over in Lawson, and she was living with a guy she wasn't married to. And she came in and she asked me a question. She said, is the Bible true? Anytime somebody asks me that, immediately they think, if it's in the Bible, it's true. <laughs> is the Bible true that you reap what you sow? Amen. Yeah. Well, she'd been cheating on her boyfriend. <laughs> so she didn't want her boyfriend to cheat on her. <laughs> She wanted to get forgiven for that sin. <laughs> I said, lady, I said, God doesn't work like that. You have to truly repent from all your sin. You have to turn away from all your sin. Oh, and you're living with a man you're not married to. That's called fornication. Oh, I said, the Bible says no fornicator will enter the kingdom of God. Amen. I said, so if you die in that state, you will go straight to hell is what I told her. Later on, I had somebody come to me. She said, you know, I ran to her at Walmart. She told me, you told her she was going straight to hell. I said, well, I kind of did tell her that. <laughs> I mean, people need to know. Amen. Come on. Yeah. People need to know yeah. that they're going straight to hell if they don't receive Jesus Christ, yeah. if they don't let him deliver them from sin. That's right. We need to know that if we're going to walk in sin, that we're walking away from God. Yes. We need to know that. Yes. Why? Because we're watchmen on the wall. Amen. God called Ezekiel to be a watchman on the wall. We're all ministers are watchmen on the walls. We're to warn the people to get right with God. Turn Amen. away from their evil Thank you, ways. Lord. Thank you. Their old ways. Turn to God. Live for Him. Praise God. Heart. I praise mean, it's a pretty simple Lord. message, folks. Hallelujah. Jesus will redeem you. He'll deliver you from all your old yes, ways. Yes, He will. Indiana. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. Amen. But now I see amazing grace, how sweet the sound to save a wretch like me. I was a wretch, but now I'm a child of God. Now I'm an heir of God and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. Now I'm redeemed, set free, made whole. My old man of sin is dead and buried in the grave with Jesus. I've been raised up together with Jesus in newness of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is in us. Hallelujah. He enables us to do what he calls us to do. Praise your Father. Thank you. Jesus is coming soon. Yes. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus, yes. Jesus is coming soon. Yes. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night or noon, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies. Heavenward bound. Jesus is coming. coming back soon. They don't have those songs anymore. No. For some reason, things have changed. Matter of fact, I had a guy in a Bible study. He told me, he began to say, oh, they've been saying that ever since I was a kid. Yeah. I said, you know, the Bible says that that's one of the signs of the end times. Amen. People say they've been saying that from the beginning of creation. Of the end times? Yeah. <laughs> We're in the end times, yeah. folks. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Thank Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. Must be in the hand of the Lord. While I was singing, somebody
Sing that one, Tom. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Make Jesus Lord in your life this morning. Glory. This morning. I Hallelujah. guess it's still morning. It is still morning. <laughs> Amen. Just come on up here. Don't be ashamed. Just come Praise on up here. God. I'm going to pray for you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. 